What do you say to people, though, who are listening and think, well, easy for you to say, Father, you don't have children. You might have loud mm-hmm. music outside your window, but you've got <laughs> structured time for prayers that you're made to go to. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got to work two jobs or I've got this many children and life's hard, man. Like mm-hmm. how, what do I do? What do I do to carve out time for, for, for peace, for rest, for quiet yeah. in, in a busy kind of life? And I, maybe they're letting themselves off the hook. Maybe they don't realize just how full your life is, right? But Yeah. I mean, it's there are days, right, where like I show up to holy hour and I'm like, oh my goodness, because I was doing some ministry or working and doing some I didn't pray my daytime prayer yet. You know, like I know that sounds small, but like for religious where my life is built around this life of prayer, it's like things happen and you know, it's like, you know, sometimes you have to really like look at like what's the greater good here. And, and not to judge people, but just to say like, okay, what am I really looking for? What is prayer? Prayer is my heart encountering the heart of Jesus, which is a revelation of the heart of the Father in the power of the Spirit. And so if that's what it is, I can pray anywhere and anytime. Now, I get it. You got kids screaming. It's like, I'm about to go nuts right now, right? Um, but St. Francis said this. He said, I will make my heart my hermitage. Mm. And he was torn between like living a more like aromatical life and like being with people. And what does that word mean, aromatical? Aromatical. So it's it, it comes from sort of a, a way of life that's going into the desert and having a life of solitude and prayer. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so the aromatical life would be uh, a more contemplative life, a life that's maybe lived in a hermitage, a part... Yeah. You can think of the guy who's in a, you know, like a little hut in yeah. a mountain, Anthony wooded area. Egypt or, yeah. yeah. So um, there's different forms of it, mm. but at its heart, it's this contemplative life of separating oneself into a place sure. of silence. Okay. In the East, you would have like kind of pustinia yeah. would be an expression of that. Um, so, so this air medical life is like, he's like, I'm going to make my heart my mm. hermitage. Mm. And I do think it's possible and and I think one thing I tell people first off is, is it's like to just take stock of my life and just ask myself, um, where are there things that I'm doing by myself that I could start doing with Jesus? Mm-hmm. So I'm doing laundry by myself. Mm-hmm. I could do laundry with Jesus and I'm a mom. And guess what? The laundry never ends. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm, I'm working and I'm involved with my work. I'm a husband, I'm providing for my family. It's like, and I, and you know, like I was a carpenter before I was a friar. Mm -hmm. And like one of the, one of the things is like, I realized at work, like one of the places that I was able to just be alone, even though I was around people was when I was working on a table saw. Mm. So you're totally focused. Nobody's going to bother you. Um, Sometimes you have ear gear on and, and you're just, you're cutting wood. Mm-hmm. And you're just doing this activity to which you're very attentive. Totally, lest you cut your thumb off. Right? Uh, yeah, so it absolutely. Has to be a very specific, yeah. but mindful. I, but I realized that, Lord, you're here, and so the, all of a sudden, like cutting on the table saw became a place where, as I'm pushing this through, I'm like asking Jesus, please don't let me cut my fingers off. But I'm also just like, thank you, Jesus, praise you, Jesus. I pray in tongues, you know, I'd ask the Holy Spirit to come. It was a moment of encounter that was in the midst of the activity of, you know, mm. building a house, <laughs> you know. Um, so I think there are places in our lives where we're doing things alone and Jesus is wanting to meet us there. And that's something that it doesn't matter what my life is and what it looks like. I can begin to just ask that question, Lord, where is there something I'm doing alone that you want to do with me? Because my heart meets you, I'm praying, even if I'm not on my knees in the Adoration Chapel. And that might not be a real possibility for somebody for seasons of life, you know? Got a lot of friends with a lot of kids, you know, and the second of eight in my family. It's like sometimes you have to like ask yourself, like, what does holiness look like now at this moment? My wife once gave advice to a new mother who was upset about the fact that she could no longer go to adoration and pray the way she used to. And she was like, she's like, sister, your 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 holy hour, it's two in the morning when you're breastfeeding your child. You know? mm. She's a much wiser woman than I am, yeah. man. Yeah, <laughs> she's a good woman. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Before you go, do us a favor, leave a comment, let us know what you thought of the video, like, and subscribe.